Sports Office has a special guest today. We're talking about Olympic sports because we have Jaron Solomon, former Lobo track and field athlete, also La Cueva High graduate, and a member of the Trinidad Tobago Olympic track team. And, and Jaron, you get ready to go compete again. And uh, it's like you just get younger, man. You don't seem to age. No, you mean, the way I see it is, you know, age is just a number. And, um, you know, a lot of people around town, they kind of know my background. I was a soccer player when I was young. So I'm not like some of these guys who did U track and junior track and all the way up the ranks. So I just don't have the mileage on my body. Like, I'm 30 years old, but I feel like I'm 20 years old. You know, I don't have that mileage like some of these guys do. So, you know, after this Olympics, I'm going to go for another Olympics. You know, wow, so. Wow, you, you feeling that good. Mm -hmm, I feel that good. And, you know, and my motto is, and I've always had this motto, is I'll be, I'll retire from the game. I won't let the game retire me. That's, that's kind of how I see it. So um, as long as I take care of my body and do what I'm supposed to do, you know, I'll be there. How are you running right now with the real games, you know, just right around the corner? How are you? No, I'm doing well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still in the running to get the individual spot in the 400, the last individual spot. So I'll race this weekend in Atlanta, or not in Atlanta, in Houston. And um, the other guy who's vying for the same spot, he has a race in London. So it's going to kind of come down to which one of us, you know, runs the best and is in the best fitness shape come, come Rio. So, you know, hopefully I'll be doing the Open 400 and the 4x4 this year. Yeah, so if you're doing an Open uh, 400, this, this will be your first time doing Open 400 in the Olympics, right? Yeah, in the Olympics, yeah. I've run the Open 400 and World Championships a couple times, um, World Indoors and World Outdoors. So I kind of, you know, I'm used to it and stuff. And that's kind of what we all want to do as well. So it kind of adds more to, to what you're there for. So, you know, that's, that's one of my main goals. Yeah, how, how just talk about that. If you get a chance to do that, how exciting will that be if you actually get that spot and you run an Open 400? Yeah, you know, um, I've always wanted to go for two medals. You know, that's that's the goal, I think, for any track and field athlete. Some three, you know, Bolt yeah. runs for three medals. You know, other us run for two medals. And, you know, trying to be a double medalist or, you know, in my case, triple medalist would be, you know, a dream come true. That would be awesome. And so, you know, I've always dreamed of running the individual 400 in the Olympics and, and trying to make the final in that as well. And then, you know, so I think it would be kind of a, you know, a dream come true to, to get that spot. And the experience of going over to the Olympics now, everybody's scaring some of the people talking about Zika and all that. And, oh, I hope you're safe. Uh, what do you say about all this stuff that you're hearing? Uh, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people have either sent bug repellent or told me to get <laughs> mosquito spray. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, I think sometimes it gets a little overblown. Um, I was just in Sao Paulo, Brazil, about three weeks ago or four weeks ago before our Olympic trials running a meet. And uh, it's wintertime. So, I mean, I ask people, how many times do you get bit in the winter here in Albuquerque? It's really slim. So it's kind of the same type of thing. You know, it was, it was big back when it was in the summer. Um, and, uh, but now I don't think it's as big. I don't think they've had as many cases. There's more cases outside Brazil right now than there actually is in, you know, active cases in Brazil. So I don't think I'm not really that, that worried about it. And at the end of the day, hey, I'm going for Olympic medal. So I ain't going to let a little Zika or anything like that stop me from reaching the goal that I had in mind. Now, you guys might have to get up a little bit early because of the logistics of the whole thing, right, as far as getting to the track. And yeah, you know, this year they've – this Olympics, they've kind of had some different type of things in, you know, that were different from other Olympics in terms of logistics, travel, and um, they're saying that the stadium's actually an hour away from the Olympic Village um, for track and field anyway. So with traffic, it could take, you know, quite a bit yeah. of time. Um, so I think, you know, that'll, that, 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 that'll mess some people up, to tell you the truth, because, I mean, in track and field, it's everything. People are very regimented on schedules, on warm-up times, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's going to be the ones who can kind of weather those little logistical storms who will make the biggest difference and, and come through in Rio, I think. You know, thinking about that Open 400 again, like your dad being a former track champion, how much, uh, you know, you think those skills were just passed down, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, my goal always my goal was when I was younger. Is I, I mean, people would ask me, and have you run faster than your dad? And I said, don't worry, I'm going to do that. You know, and that's coming up. So, you know, I've done that. Um, you know, I've broken all his personal records. Those are th that was always a goal when I started doing track in college. You know, I say, yeah, I want to run faster than that. Um, you know, now you know he ran the individual 400s in, in two of the Olympics in the 76 and 80 Olympics. So, you know, that's something I want to want to emulate. And and uh, I think he came sixth in the 1980 Olympics. So in the Open 400. So you know, I want to I definitely want to try to beat that one. You know, at least you know get that spot above him. So, but and you you know like away from the track. 
you you're doing you're off into some some different stuff here, man. Uh, you know, talking about the freeze. You you you're really Mr. Freeze for real. <laughs> yeah, we say the crowd king. Um, you know, I we own my wife and I own Excel Crowd Therapy. Um, is the first crowd therapy shop here in New Mexico and in, in Albuquerque. And uh, you know, I wanted to bring something here to the community that that you know that was technologically ahead of a lot of other things. Yeah. And you know how it is here in Albuquerque. Right. A lot of things we get last we get the movies last we get the restaurants last we get everything last so this is one time that i can say that we definitely aren't last you know there's still some states without a cryotherapy therapy center in them so um you know it's just something that i wanted to bring to help recover uh, help people recover from injuries or chronic issues and help me recover you know that was one of my main goals i mean i was an ice bath freak for 10 years you know three times a week i take an ice bath after training so now this kind of takes a place of my ice bath and makes me feel better and it's only three minutes so it's not definitely not as painful yeah, man, ice bath, is, that's some real stuff right there. I mean, you got to, hey, at the end of the day, if you want to run, if you want to run into your 30s, you got to do those little things. You know, you've got to do the little logistical things. You know, I take massages three or, you know, four times a month. Every Wednesday night I have a massage with my massage therapist, Liz, and, um, you know, she's been taking care of me for almost 10 years now. So um, I just do all the little things that that's going to make your, you know, create you know create that longevity in the sport. And uh, so – uh, speaking of the sport, going back to the Olympics now, what would be like the perfect 2016 games for Jaron Solomon? Uh, the two perfect 2016 games, man, would be two gold medals. You know, that's that's a perfect. That's a perfect. Well, you have a, a few, a couple of bronzes, right? Yeah. So 2012, we got a bronze medal in the in the in the relay, um, and then I've got a litany of other of other medals from Worlds and Commonwealth Games and Pan Am Games and that kind of stuff. So uh, you know. Caribbean games and and you know I want to get that individual uh, an individual goal. My thing is you got to shoot for the you got to shoot for the number one spot. That's the only place you want to be. You know, um, obviously to make the podium is is a big deal. To get any medal is a big deal. But you know, if you go in there only shooting for a bronze and you ain't gonna get the gold, that's for sure. Right. So uh, you know, I think that that's always been my my goal is to be goal is to be at the top no matter what I'm doing. Is it is it is odd when you uh, like uh, Anna Canuo? We were talking to her. She's competing for Canada. Mm -hmm. You guys live in the states. You guys competing for these different uh, countries, and you see your you know like fellow Americans around there. Is that kind of weird? No, you know um, I'm friends with all like especially in track and field. Obviously, like I'm friends with all the American guys. You know we're all boys and stuff, and we hang out offside the track and at meets and stuff like that, and, and joke with each other and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's cool. And you know for me running for Trinidad and Tobago, that's where my family's from. And when I started track, you know, I didn't really start track till I was 19 years old, 20 years old. So I was, you know, I was old compared to a lot of these guys. And, um, you know, I ran well my first year in college and Trinidad called and they said, hey, you know, you're a dual citizen. Do you want to represent Trinidad? And at that time, I had no idea. I, I was still thinking about soccer. I didn't think yeah. I was still going to be, you know, I didn't think I was going to be doing track for a living or go to the Olympics. Like, Going to the Olympics, I had a dream of going to the Olympics when I was young, but it was for soccer. It wasn't for track. <laughs> so, you know, when they called, I said, yeah, you know, I really love track. You know, when I was young, I used to do all my projects and stuff on Trinidad and Tobago. When they say do a flag in, in elementary school, you know, you had to scribble the flag out and do all that kind of stuff. It was always a Trinidadian flag, you know, Trinidad and yeah. Tobago flag. So um, when they called, I was like, yeah, you know, I think that would be great. But I had no idea I would reach this level with it. So, you know, I've been competing for Trinidad and Tobago now for 10 years. Yeah. And uh, people ask me all the time, would you represent the U.S.? And I said, you know, no, not at this point. You know, I, I'm I'm a U.S. citizen as well, but I represent Trinidad and Tobago as yeah. well because that's kind of where my heritage comes from. So, um, and you know, I love the people down there. I've gained a lot of friends down there. A lot of my great friends, you know, are from Trinidad and Tobago, and and uh, so you know, it's just it's been kind of the best of yeah. both worlds, you know. And and, and uh, as far as going out there, I know I was talking to you earlier about getting out there with the people. You, you don't you, they don't walk out when you walk out you're not that's just not like Jared Solomon oh, oh here comes everybody no you know in Trinidad it's, it's a pretty laid back culture in terms of you know celebrity type of stuff um people yeah they know us or they see us and you know we're on the news or that kind of stuff but they don't really impose themselves too much on you they're no, like no, no they're not they're not right up in your grill or anything you know they, they're they're real respectful most of the time so you know there's obviously that one-offs but um for the most part they're real you know cool with it yeah. sometimes they just want a, a picture or a selfie or whatever or you right. know something like that and it's cool to do you know it's cool right. like that and we we love interacting with people like that and um you know people there are just generally more laid back wow all right well thanks for joining us and giving us some of your time he's jaron solomon 
Check him out competing with Trinidad and Tobago uh, during the Olympics, the 2016 Games in Rio. Former Lobo, La Cueva graduate. I'm Van Tate, Jared Chester, helping out behind the camera today. We'll see you next time. We'll <laughs>